Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Questions than answers today. Far more many questions than answers. There's a lot of rumor swirling around the Vegas massacre. Yet we hear he had no religious affiliation. He had no political affiliation. Frankly, the whole thing stinks to high heaven. Welcome to the very, very troublesome Savage Nation today. The worst mass shooting in American history with automatic weapons from a hotel suite, a wraparound hotel suite, which cost a fortune, by the way. The one thing we can dismiss for sure is that he snapped. That's a complete BS line. No one plans an event like this so carefully, and then uh, you hear snapped. Nonsense. This was orchestrated and planned. He booked this suite months in advance. It was a panoramic suite that opened on two locations overlooking the concert venue. Many questions remain, such as, how did he get so many rifles into that room without anyone noticing in that hotel? Can anyone explain that to me? How can a man bring so many rifles into a hotel room without hotel security noticing? That's number one. Any of you who are shooters out there, how heavy do you think those lead bullets weighed? You think those lead bullets are not heavy? They're very, very heavy especially with the amount of ammunition this psycho had. How did he get those into the room? Those are number two questions. Number three question is the windows. The windows in these high rises in Las Vegas in particular are virtually hurricane proof windows because they have high desert winds, they have uh, earth rumblings. That glass is virtually bulletproof glass. How did he break the glass? I don't go for the cover story that he used the hammer. Did you see the windows in any of the footage? The breaks in the windows are 10 feet high. Now, there's a rumor swirling around that he used the ventilation uh, breaks in the window. You know, those windows sometimes have a ventilation slot. But that doesn't make sense for this kind of carnage. Now, he could have shot the windows out. How did he learn how to shoot an AK-47? He was a licensed hunter and a pilot who owned two airplanes. He was an accountant by training. He had a massive debt from gambling. Some of these things make no sense at all. The whole picture does not add up. I can't come to any conclusions. I ask you not to come any, to any conclusions. Anyone can blame any villain that they want. There are a lot of sick people out there. The sickest thing I've seen today, the sickest thing, is a lawyer for CBS News, a girl, I don't think I can put my hands on it. I dismissed the story. This girl, uh, whatever she was there at CBS, a woman, call her a woman, a psycho liberal said she's glad that it happened because they were all Trump voters. Can you believe this? Why did hotel staff not see anything if he had been there for three days? How could the shooter have broken through this heavy duty glass? What about the girlfriend? How could she not know anything? 
And of course, you heard about the two people. Again, the actually the identity of the people is unimportant, but there were two people said to be Hispanic in appearance. Again, that's nothing to do with this thing, but this is what was reported. Two of them were seen warning people they were going to die within 45 minutes. Who are these two people? And ISIS claimed credit for shooting, the shooting, and claimed the shooter had converted to Islam. The FBI has denied that a connection. Is the ISIS claim opportunistic? And why was the shooter's online history erased so quickly from the Internet? How can it be claimed he just snapped when he prepared for this patiently and waited for the right moment? Why did hotel surveillance tape not catch anything being brought into the hotel? Many, many questions remain. They're swirling around. Uh, a woman circulated in the crowd 45 minutes before the shooting saying, you're all going to die. I want you to listen from KSNV television, uh, the first sound by clip one in the Savage Nation. So there was a lady who pushed her way forward into the concert venue into the first row and she started messing with another lady and told us that we are all going to die tonight. It was about 45 minutes before the shots were actually fired, but then she was escorted out by security. Mm -hmm. Next, next one. Obviously, she was telling us that in either to tell us to warn us or to tell us that we were all going to die and she was part of it, so... Her and her boyfriend were both Hispanic. They were probably about shorter five-footers, probably about five, 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 six. Um, they just look like everyday people. How did they know about it? There's much more to this picture. How do we know there was even one shooter? I mean, we're talking about a 400-yard shot. We are talking about a 400-yard shot. Now, maybe he was spraying. I don't think he could be aiming. But those are 400-yard shots with a military-grade weapon. The first thought that came to my mind, if I must be perfectly honest with my audience, which is all I have to give you, is my insights and my honesty, is gun control. Not only are there going to be calls for gun control, but there should be calls for gun control. And we should discuss gun control. How do you like that one? And I'm not a liberal. And I'm a gun owner. And I defend the Second Amendment. And I've given a fortune to the NRA. But I still think we need to discuss gun control. How's that? Does that work for you? What, are we not allowed to even ask the question? Why not? Why did this man have these weapons? How did he get 30 rifles into a hotel room? WABC Phil, go ahead. Let's take some callers on the program. Hello, Dr. Savage. How are you? My name is Phil. How's everything going? Please, come on. Don't ask me how are things going. Just tell me what's on your well, mind. I apologize. Well, it, it's very easy to get guns into hotel rooms. You can break down weapons into multiple parts. You can transport them just as easily as you can transport your, your clothing. Uh, ammunition, generally, you had said before that they're lead. Uh, rifle ammo primarily is not lead. They're either steel jacketed, they're, they're copper, they're brass. Uh, they do have significant weight to them, but a couple hundred rounds may only weigh maybe 20, 30, 40 pounds at the most. Um, it's, it's relatively uh, easy to transport them. So you think he brought these weapons and ammunition in in, in several in several stages over the days he was in that suite? That's very possible. You could break a rifle down into, into, into you know, uh, uh, sections that are no more than 18 inches long. So you could put them in a backpack. You could break down an AR-15. I have multiple, multiple firearms. You could break them down. Do you and think the average American should have the right to own a, an assault rifle? I, I do. I, I, to be honest with you, I do. Not an automatic. Uh, I, I don't believe anyone, anyone, uh, any you know, civilians should own fully automatic. But uh, Were these rifles being fired automatically? It sure sounded like it to me. Absolutely, absolutely. But you, well, I'll give you a little piece of information you may not know. Fully automatic weapons or machine guns are perfectly legal in uh, Nevada. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that, actually. Yeah, if you have a license, you can own a machine gun or a fully automatic assault rifle in, in Nevada, by the way. I just want you to know that wide band I uh, but it's not hard to modify a semi-automatic uh, weapon if you know a little bit about I know there's only one or two parts required to convert an AR to a to a fully auto I've seen the the bulletins on it but this is a time for us to come together as a nation I cannot believe the sickness I'm seeing and hearing out there blaming uh, one side and the other for this but uh, I believe that this slaughter will make us all ask questions that we may, ne may never get answers to do you think he really was an ISIS sympathizer? 
I don't believe so. I, I, I don't think so. I think ISIS just likes to take responsibility for the attention. Uh, anything. All right. So they just so the, this the, the 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 cowards in ISIS are opportunistic vermin who look for any opportunity to sound like they're everywhere at all times. I get that. I can't say thank you for the call because this is too painful for all of us. And we all know that it could have been our children. It could have been us. It could have been the cop on the corner. It could have been your best friend there. This was as wholesome as it gets. This was not uh, for, not that we're justifying where it would have occurred. Don't get me wrong at all. But this was not uh, a, a slut concert. This was not a violent concert. This was not a horrible. This, these are good people. These are just all American people. Why that crowd? That's another big question. Think about that. That's another huge question that pops in your mind the minute. Why a country crowd? These are generally decent, law-abiding, middle-class American people. Why? And why are two windows broken? Again, if you look at the pictures out there, and uh, they're all over the place, and I'm not trying to get you to go to a website right now. I, I'll, I, I would rather cut my tongue out than do that today is sell you something like that based on this tragedy. I heard someone on the radio almost died earlier. He was boasting about his ratings on someone else's television show in the middle of this. I really got sick. I said, do these people have no feedback? Do they have no sense of shame as to what they're saying? Well, I'm running short of time. There are more questions than answers when I come back. We'll play the police scanner audio at the moment they breached the shooter's room. But there's another question about that. Did the SWAT team shoot him or did he shoot himself? We hear that he shot himself, but we have evidence that is emerging that there was a gunfight in the room when the remarkably brave and heroic SWAT team broke into that room. There's uh, audio that indicates one of the men was shot by this piece of, sh a piece of garbage. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Everybody in that hallway to be aware of it and get back. We need to pop this and see if we get any type of response from this guy to see if he's in here or if he's actually moved out somewhere else. Got the audience on the 32nd floor. SWAT has explosive breach. Everyone in the hallway needs to move back. All units move back. Breach, breach, breach. That was not the ACLU going in to discuss politics with the psychopath. That was not the American Civil Liberties Union going in to talk to him. Those were the men and women who put their lives on the line every day in this nation. They're called police. They're called sheriffs, the people that are hated by, by Black Lives Matter, Antifa, the domestic terrorist group, 90% of college professors. They were not college professors or psychologists breaching that doorway. They were police. There were reports coming out that as people were lay, laying there dying with bullet holes in them, ex-military who were in the audience were putting their fingers in the bullet holes to stop the bleeding. Guess you won't see that on the evening news because it doesn't meet the agenda of people in the military. It would make Wolf Blitzer squirm to realize that there are men out there much better than he is. But, you know, I don't want to sit here and do the usual thing here of attacking liberals and try to make myself pumped up here with that garbage. The questions bother me. There are more questions than answers. The ISIS claim seems to be opportunistic. Something is wrong with this whole picture. Looking at the pictures of the hotel itself with the curtains coming out of one of the windows, you know, it's, it's eerily reminiscent, by the way, as I look at the Mandalay Bay imagery of the Twin Towers. I mean, what this is doing to America today you may not know this yet, and maybe I'm the first one to say it, although there were uh, not as many deaths. It's eerily reminiscent of 9-11. Do you know that? This terrorist attack, whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. Who is this guy who's going to spray a crowd of concert goers and randomly kill men, women, and children? Who is this man? 
Who is this mystery man? So you look at the pictures of the Mandalay Bay. It reminds me eerily of the Twin Towers with the broken windows. That's number one. On the level of the nation itself, the nation is right now in the same shock that it was, almost the same shock that it was during 9-11, by the way, because virtually everyone in America has gone to Vegas or knows someone who went to Vegas, and everyone's saying, I could have been in that crowd, my daughter could have been in that crowd, my son could have been in that crowd, I could have been in that crowd. Okay, something is wrong with the picture. Why did this man execute ordinary Americans? This is a crowd of ordinary Americans. Now look at the windows in the pictures. The holes in these windows are 15 to 20 feet high. It looks as though all the glass was shot out of these windows. My only guess is that he broke the windows not with a hammer, but with automatic fire. Because even if they're shatterproof or hurricane proof, uh, a round coming out of an AK is going to go right through that glass. Um, tell me if I'm mistaken on that. Something's wrong with the picture. Who is this guy? We know he is an accountant by training. We know he is a licensed hunter and a pilot who owned two airplanes. What does that mean? Now, every pilot is suspect, every hunter is suspect? Absolutely not. Paul on WABC, fire away 30 seconds or less. What's on your mind? Hi, Michael. I was disappointed to hear your, the question of, about possible gun control because on a day like today, I think you're sounding like a Democrat, and I know you're not either or. You're, you're well, I really don't care what I sound like. What, I'm supposed to keep quiet because I might offend someone in the gun business? No, no, because... Oh, well, we get... well, wait, wait, I, let, let, let's talk about it. The Second Amendment, the right to bear arms, what, does that mean bearing, what, a tank? An armored personnel carrier in your backyard? How far do we go with the right to bear arms now? How does this piece of garbage get so many rifles with so much, with high-powered capacity and, and execute people that we're not supposed to ask the most obvious question? Let's do away with pressure cookers and vans, right? Because they're... No, no, th this is a stupid argument. You're giving a fallacious argument. The fact of the matter is we have to discuss gun control because if this man was in therapy or PTSD or on medication, do you think that anyone on medication should own a, a high-powered rifle? Their own laws. Let me ask you that question. Should a man who is in therapy on medication be allowed to own an AK-47? Then they didn't do their proper background check because in New York you would never be able to get a gun. Oh, so you're answering your own question. We are discussing gun control, and rightly so. Thank you for uh, engaging in the conversation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Control 159 SB, you need the radio, please. I'm on the 32nd floor. The room is going to be 135, break. 182 SC. We have a security officer also shot in the leg on the 32nd floor. He's standing by by the elevator. Got the audience on the 32nd floor. SWAT has explosive breach. Everyone in the hallway. We need the air clear for Zebra 20. They have one suspect down inside the room. Zebra 20 has one suspect down inside the room. That's affirmative. One suspect down in 135, 432, Mandalay Bay. I have the floor. So this room is clear. It has been cleared by shot with close breaches. We also had one shot officer that did fire negative injuries on anybody else. Just to we have multiple firearms up here that's from where they were shooting out from. Uh, and we just have one suspect down at this point in time. All right. So we heard that one security officer had been shot in the leg prior to the breach. What's that about? There are some other questions that are very troublesome. 400-yard shot, okay, he was just spraying wildly into the crowd. There was no aiming necessary with a machine gun. He used two shooting positions. He had a corner suite. Number three, why did he put a camera in that doorway to notify him when the police showed up? This was carefully planned. Did you know about the camera? Something's wrong with this picture. And I will discuss the Second Amendment. And I will discuss gun control. And I don't care what you think of me. How's that? How do you like that? Because I'll do it again and again and again until we get to the bottom of this. No, I do not believe mentally ill people should, be, should have the right to bear arms. How do you like that? And now, what is a mentally ill person? That's a very interesting question. Does that mean someone who's returned from uh, Afghanistan or Iraq with PTSD? Should they be denied the right to uh, bear arms? I don't know. How's that? 
How about someone on medication? What, one-third of America is on prescription drugs? How many of them are cops? How many of them are ex-military? Should they be banned from uh, owning weapons? Think about it. I don't know. This country has melted down so rapidly, it feels like Chernobyl. It feels like we're living in Chernobyl now. The whole nation seems like a nuclear power plant that's melting down. You can't turn anywhere and not see insanity. The whole nation is insane. Whether it's the bums that are allowed to crap in the streets of New York or San Francisco and no one does anything about it, or a thing like this, the country is melting down. Who do you blame for this? Blame yourself. Blame Trump. Blame Obama. Blame the times. Blame doesn't matter. What are you going to do about it? What you're going to do about it is change your lifestyle. People are going to withdraw into themselves. I have no answers to the questions. All I have are the questions themselves. WABC Joseph, do you have a comment to make that's worth listening to? Go ahead, please. Uh, yes, hello, uh, Dr. Savage. I, in fact, did have a friend in, in Las Vegas at the night of the attack last night. And um, throughout the day, I've had a co quite a few friends and family members, and I myself have been looking, um, Antifa has been taking credit throughout social media of this terrorist attack. Because if you think of... Yeah, but they're a bunch of phony, you know, college teachers and students and miscreants who put a scarf on and then go back and teach SOS 101. They're like ISIS. They are a domestic terrorist group, and we think that they should be rounded up. Absolutely, every last one of them should be interned. Everyone should be interred. Any member of Antifa, any funder of Antifa, any supporter of Antifa should be put into a, a prison camp as far as I'm concerned. And I don't care how high up the food chain they are. Yes, and the thing is... But, but, but blaming them is not accurate because we don't know who this guy was. For all we know, he could have been something else. How do we know who he was? But at the same time, sir, you brought up how the people that were attacked, it was a country music festival. I imagine a lot of those people are going to be very, very conservative. And we've heard the rhetoric from the left about those kinds of people, how disgusting and putrid they are. They're evil, fascist, racist, all that kind of crap. Yes, there are many reports of vermin on the left celebrating the white Trump supporters who were killed in Las Vegas massacre. One of them was a, a school teacher who celebrated the horrific massacre in Las Vegas because she said many of the victims are likely to have been white Trump supporters. Her Twitter name was Anne hashtag the resistance. She is a teacher. She said lots of white Trump supporters in Las Vegas at Route 21 watching Jason Aldean. Pray only Trump tards died. Hashtag pray for Vegas. Now, after the tweet began to go viral, this piece of garbage deleted it and then wiped out her entire account. Who is this woman? Where is she teaching? But the biggest problem for me thus far is why CBS has not fired one of their legal workers, a lawyer at that, who also celebrated the massacre. I'm sure you heard about that one by now. There are many, many problems here. The gunman shot from the 32nd floor, corner suite, very reminiscent of 9-11. Something is wrong with the picture. We're all in shock. The nation is in the same level of shock almost as 9-11. And I will repeat that again. I don't need anyone in television to say what I just said. I know what it did to me. Therefore, I know what it did to you. Every one of us knows someone or ourselves who has been to a concert like this or in Las Vegas at some point. So now what, we have to look up at every window when we walk around and see if someone broke out a window and start running? Listen to what actually happened. And for those of you, you know, here's the part you can hear. Well, if we had conceal and carry laws, and if we were armed, we could have taken them out. We're going to hear that from all of the, the gunslingers in the audience. You want to listen to what actually what happened to all you gunslingers? Here's 16. I don't care what you had in your pocket. You couldn't have defended yourself. Listen to 16. He was just spraying the crowd. I mean, it was relentless. There's there no stopping. You had only five, maybe eight seconds to move from cover to cover to try to move and get out of there uh, as he reloaded. I saw people, I mean, thank God it was a country concert. Uh, I mean, you saw a lot of ex-military just jump into gear. I saw guys plugging bullet holes with their fingers. I saw police officers while everyone else was crouching. Police officers standing up at targets. You know, just trying to direct people, tell them where to go. I mean, the amount of bravery I saw there is just, the words can't describe what, what it was like. I mean, there were 10-foot walls boxing everybody in. We couldn't escape. They were fish in a barrel. So all of you John Waynes out there with the conceal and carry nonsense in your head, 
uh, just put it aside for a minute. You would have gone down like a 10 pin like everybody else. So that's not the answer. The question is the answer. Who was he? This uh, is starting to look more and more to me like a carefully planned conspiracy that goes well beyond this guy. We will soon find that out as sure as I'm sitting here. We don't know much about him other than he was an accountant, hunter, pilot, means nothing. What, every hunter now and pilot is suspect? No. Something is wrong with the picture. This was too carefully planned. He rented this suite months in advance, a corner suite, with two, uh, two shooting sites. WJJF in Connecticut. Rich, what do you think went on here? Uh, I think myself, this, uh, he had inside help. In other words, how did he get all these weapons and ammunition up to that room? Uh, how did he get a hold of, uh, you know, security camera uh, footage and all this other stuff or, or be able to monitor it? He had inside help. I would check every busboy, every bellhop, every cook, every server, every uh, housekeeping person. Check them all. He had inside help. That's what you think because it was too big an event for a man to pull it off on his own? Absolutely. All right. That's certainly a rational thought if you were a uh, an inspector in a in the LA in the Los, Las Vegas Police Department or FBI, you would be thinking along those lines. There are other questions. What are your questions today? Listeners to this Savage Nation. What are your questions today? Diana, KBOI in Boise, line 2. Go ahead, fire away. Yes, sir. Uh, earlier you were talking about the windows and how they were blown out, and I, I kept staring at that picture of those blown-out windows, and to me it looks like two different rooms, but of course I don't know that. That's just how it appears to me. And, oh, by the way, Dr. Savage, that uh, Breitbart's reporting that woman was fired from CBS. She, uh, oh, good. The woman, uh, the, the attorney who celebrated the shooting saying it was only white uh, cl- Trump tards who got killed and they didn't matter. CBS actually did something and fired her? Yes, they did. I mean, according to Braveheart just now. Well, all right. That's a very good report from a very good website. Terrible tragedy today. Just awful. Just awful. And I think the answers are going to start to emerge over the next hours and days. And I'm not sure this was a lone wolf. I think there's much more to this picture than meets the eye. WBOB in Jacksonville. Chris... Line three, you're ex-military, you have some insights, go ahead, share them. Uh, I got a, like a zero, like a, like a dumbo, a call screen to get on top of the callers. I know he was there, then he wasn't there. Here we go again, Chris on WABC, line nine, you're up. Hey, uh, Michael, how are you doing? A um, couple things about the Second Amendment, I just want to let you know this. Do if somebody uses a truck bomb, do we penalize the Exxon Mobil, the gasoline companies? I mean, where does it end? You live in a country where you're lucky to have. Well, a- look, I, I'm on your side, but that's a ludicrous analogy. Very smart individual. You have an analytical mind. Now follow me, okay? It's the intention of the individual. Now, do we want to? Isn't it by by law, by history, aren't we supposed to have this? Can I ask you something, Chris? Why do you need an automatic weapon? What do you need it for? I, exactly. But, are, but I'm just saying. I mean, No, I'm just asking. Why do you need an automatic weapon? Please explain it to me. Can't you go out and shoot armadillo or whatever? I mean, there's reasons to have a uh, uh, you know, machine gun automatic. But I'm saying... Wait, no, I'm asking you, you seem to be supporting the right to bear any kind of weapon, to own any kind of weapon, and I'm saying there needs to be limits. Uh, should we let, let the average individual own a howitzer now uh, and saying it's a Second Amendment-covered weapon? We have, I'm saying we have a representative government. If the amendments want to come down where there's, there's uh, you know, uh, stops, and uh, deterrence on what we can own, I'm okay with that. But what I'm trying to say, you're making a... Oh, right, well, I'm glad you have limitations. I was, I was thinking maybe you thought we should be able to buy used... Russian tanks and put them in our front yard. But 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 is it really the? Aren't we supposed to have the munitions and essence to defend ourselves against tyranny from a government? We're yeah, so- that's the theory, right? We all expected that during Obama. I didn't see any government coming down to get us. Then did you? Obama was too smart for that. He was getting us with spying agencies rather than with guns. He didn't round anybody up. I mean, so I understand there's the potential for the roundup, and we're going to all be. Uh, 
uh, Davy Crockett in our front window shooting out the glass. We're going to defend ourselves against the tyranny of the government. I get the whole picture, but you know what? I'm sick of hearing that argument. Something's wrong with this picture. It's time to have a discussion of weaponry and what we are allowed to own. And let me tell you something. I own a weapon like that, and it is perfectly legal, and it's not semi-automatic, nor is it automatic. I own what is legal. What do I need it for? You want to talk about self-defense in a house for a minute? Well, let's talk about that for a minute. You don't need a semi-automatic rifle to defend yourself in a house. Get yourself a shotgun. Ask anybody in the business. It's the single best weapon. And if you want something quicker, get a, get a handgun. So, you know, this whole idea that you're going to go get the, the, the semi-automatic rifle and hold off an army, yeah, man, let's stop already. Let's stop BSing each other. You know, a handgun and a, and a shotgun is about all you need and it's all, all you're going to have time to grab if someone breaks into your house is a handgun, number one, and a shotgun, number two. Unless you keep a semi-automatic weapon fully loaded in your bedroom, ready to fire, it's not going to be available to you. And by the way, if you do, you're really crazy. If you're living in a house and you have a semi-automatic weapon near your bed that is cocked and ready to fire, you're a real sicko. I'm running short of time here. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Look, if you travel for business, you happen to know it's a game of wins and losses. Popping open an overhead bin, finding it empty, that's a win. Sleeping through a wake-up call, that's a loss. Buying your business trip at Upside.com, that's not just a win, it's a triple win. Number one is Upside has the absolute best available prices for flights, hotel, and rental cars. Win number two is that Upside will reward you with a gift card to places like Amazon.com every time you buy a business trip. And <clears throat> number three is the amazing six-star treatment you'll get from Upside's customer service specialist, who they call Navigators. One recent Upside customer was called away for an emergency meeting and had to miss his wife's birthday. So a Navigator actually sent her flowers to try and help ease the disappointment. That's pretty good. And that's just one example of how Upside Navigators go above and beyond for business travelers. Imagine what they'll do for you. Upside Navigators are instantly accessible 24-7 by voice, chat, email, or message on the Upside app, even reaching out to you with useful info to help you avoid a problem before it happens. And I'm going to start your Upside six-star treatment right now. Six-star treatment right now. Listen carefully. Go to Upside.com. Use my code SAVAGE. You're going to get a minimum $100 gift card to Amazon.com. That's right. Just by using code SAVAGE for a minimum $100 gift card to Amazon.com. When you buy your next business trip at Upside.com, Upside.com, you deserve a better business trip. Minimum purchase required. See site for complete details. We have breaking news confirming what a caller just said. CBS has parted ways with one of the company's top lawyers after this sick lawyer said, quote, she is not even sympathetic to victims of the Las Vegas shooting because, quote, country music fans often are Republican. This is an individual named Haley Geftman Gold. She was a former vice president and senior counsel, and she took to Facebook after the maniac opened fire at the Harvest Music Festival in Vegas, killing 58 and selling more than 500 to the hospitals. Geftman Gold was fired, and she said if they wouldn't do anything when children were murdered, I have no hope that repugs would ever do the right thing. Geftman Gold worked for CBS News. Geftman Gold did not work directly with the network news division we are hear we're hearing now. But we know that Geftman Gold... According to her LinkedIn bio, Geftman Gold worked at CBS in September 2016, and Geftman Gold graduated from the prestigious Columbia University Law School in the year 2000. This is the kind of psychos that come out of law schools now. Now, what about the shooter himself? Very little is known. Hunter, yes. Pilot, yes. So what? Former accountant, yes. So what? Nothing about his background tells us a damn thing. It's as though he is known in the business as clean skin. Those of you in the intelligence business know what I'm saying when I say clean skin. Do you know what clean skin means? You know what I'm talking about, don't you? You want to go down there, that road? I'll go, I'll go down that road with you. Clean skin. 
clean skin. This guy was clean skin. Who is he? Mr. Average White Guy? Average background? Average gambling retiree? No. Clean skin. Brainwashed? Maybe. Deep plant? Maybe. But what about the speed pattern and inconsistent rate of gunfire heard in the videos? People are saying he could have used cheap and legal modification devices to accelerate the firing of the weapon to almost 700 rounds a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. There were still bodies on that side of people just laying in pools of blood. And, uh, I, you know, I still didn't even know if that was safe or not. But, you, you know, it's kind of a fight or flight situation. You can't really, you just got to take it to God at that point and, you know, hope that you can make it and hope that you're, you're safe. And I know I can't speak for everyone, but for me, I'm just, you know, I'm, I was agnostic going into that concert. And I'm a firm believer in God now because there's no way that, you know, all that happened and that I made it and I was blessed enough to, to still be here alive talking to you today. Yep, that really makes sense. So everyone else was um, killed because they didn't believe in God. I mean, come on. He survives, he believes in God. He was an agnostic before, now he's not. Uh, unbelievable what this does to people. Well, my friends, there are more questions than answers, more than 50 dead. And the uh, issue of the automatic weapon, the semi-automatic weapon, the rate of fire is a question now. But all of that is trivial to me. The real question is, how did this clean-skinned white guy go crazy, so to speak? This was carefully planned, carefully orchestrated. There may be more than one person involved. From the point of view of the firepower, the fact that he was able to get away with it, the fact that no one noticed him bringing the guns in, the ammunition in. All right, I hear that. It's a busy hotel. You can bring anything in. You could walk an elephant into the room. There's very lax security in these hotels. They can't screen everyone going in, or can they? Is that what's going to come next? Uh, metal detectors now on the way in and out of Las Vegas hotels? Maybe. Something's wrong with the picture. More questions than answers. What questions are bothering you about the Vegas slaughter? We all believe the ISIS claim is opportunistic, but we cannot rule it out. I brought up the issue of a clean skin. That's a sort of a spy novel thing, a CIA operative, a plant. Why would they do that? For what reason? Oh, I see, to grab your guns. Okay, I get it. That's the paranoid view of the world, and many people live in that world, and I can't deny that they live in this world. Uh, we all have different opinions, but we're all shattered today. This is a 9-11 of our time. The buildings are reminiscent of, 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 the, of the Twin Towers. The broken windows are reminiscent. They provoked in me a reminiscence of 9-11. I was on the air during that time. I watched it all. Something's wrong with the picture. And we're not getting the answers that we need to even rationalize what happened, to be rational about it. Josh Abbott, a band guitarist, just said... He flipped his gun control stance following Las Vegas shooting. I don't know who he is, but he said, I've been a proponent of the Second Amendment my entire life. Until the events of last night, I cannot express how wrong I was. We actually have members of our crew with CHL licenses and legal firearms on the bus. They were useless. You see that? Hmm. The guitarist added that his bandmates and crew could not access their firearms during the attack because police could have mistaken them for attackers as well. He wrote, we need gun control right now. My biggest regret is that I stubbornly didn't realize it until my brothers on the road and myself were threatened by it. Okay, that's one opinion. It's not going to be the only one of that opinion. 
and I know many of you are nervous about that. And, of course, you're going to get all the John Waynes on the radio who are going to bang their chest and say, anyone who calls for gun control is a damn uh, progressive, lousy communist. I know there's a lot of John Waynes out there, tough guys with microphones. I'm not one of them. If I ever was that, those days are over. It's very easy to sit behind a microphone with bodyguards, which I don't have, and make believe you're the toughest guy on the planet. But let me remind you of something, all of you tough guys with microphones out there. None of us are bulletproof, so think very carefully. Your wife isn't bulletproof. Your children aren't bulletproof. Your mother isn't bulletproof. You're not bulletproof. So think carefully before you shoot your mouth off and start screaming about, we don't want gun control. What do you want? What, what's your answer to, this, to the question? Status quo ante, the same thing on and on and on over and over again? They have to, first of all, there are limits, so it's a moot question to begin with. Of course, there are limitations on what you can own, number one, and who can own them, number two. We already have gun control. But the question is, how far does it go, and does it go far enough? This guy was a clean skin, so far as we know. I keep repeating the same word. Who was he? Was he a plant? I mean, you're going to get conspiracy websites that were going to say, all right, you know, he was put there by the government, by deep state. Uh, for what? To seize your guns? Why? Why now? Why do they want to seize your guns now? No, that doesn't make sense to me. If anything, it would have happened during the Obama years. But then again, who knows what could happen during the Trump years? It could be worse yet. We don't know what will happen. So these are the issues that are swirling around. If you listen to the, the uh, sound of the gun going off, it doesn't, bring, it doesn't bring me to chills. It brought me to tears thinking of the girls who were crying, frankly. That's what it did to me. Because I, all I thought of was my own family. That's all I could think of. This is just a rock concert. Uh, not even a rock concert. I mean, a country concert. These were good people. They're our people. So what happened here? Who is this guy? Is he really a lone wolf? Did he just snap? Of course he didn't just snap. This was carefully planned and orchestrated. He had a, a camera at his door to see when the police arrived. And not for effect, but for reality, I want you to listen to the raw video of the shooter's automatic gun attack as it's happening. And I want you to ask yourself, all you John Waynes out there, what would a handgun have done for you then? Answer, nothing. Listen to clip four. We are now living in Syria. This is the sound that you would have heard in Syria during the Civil War. Mandalay Massacre. 515 injured, that's now. 58 dead, that's now. Machine gun, that's now. 72 minutes of firing. How, how did he not get stopped in 72 minutes? How is that even possible? WABC Lou, line eight, go ahead, please make your comment. Yes, good afternoon, Dr. Savage. Your first step is to ban high-capacity magazines. But that is a moot point because we both know there are millions out there in America now. So I do not see an answer. I don't see an answer. That is right. You could round up every automatic weapon, a semi-automatic rifle, in the hands of American citizens, legally in their hands, and it would not stop this from occurring again because there are already too many guns in circulation, and there's no getting them back. Absolutely. Unless you go house to house with confiscation, and we both know that is not going to happen. I, have fi I am a firearm owner myself, a few semi-automatic rifles, and I do believe in a ban on high-cap magazines. But as I said, 
it's impossible to get rid of all the ones that are already in circulation. And they're sold on the Internet. You can go on the Internet and buy them. So then what is the answer here, Lou? Not go to a concert? Not go to a movie? Not go to a mall? Not go to a restaurant? Sit behind locked doors? What's the answer here, Lou? I don't know. It's frightening. And as I say, I am a firearm owner, and I am heartbroken. Where did this bum get the money for that room? That's what I want to know. I'm something's wrong with somebody funded this. Somebody funded this. Where did this cracker get the money for that room? I just got a call now coming up from KBET in Las Vegas. This is interesting because I've had my staff looking all morning for the price of the room, this wraparound panoramic room that he shot from with two shooting galleries, and we couldn't get any prices that were realistic. Listen to this now. William on KBET, go ahead, please. Hi, how are you? Uh, listen, I, I work seven days a week. I clean pools for a living. I spend my life in most of the very nice communities. Last Saturday, I'm out at Lake Las Vegas, which is one of our nicest communities, talking to one of my customers. He's getting ready to take his family to this music festival. And he tells me, did you hear that this gentleman, he couldn't get a room at the Mandalay Bay? I said, what do you mean? He said he paid $100,000 for it. And I said, well, what's this? I, I said, I thought that those suites were comp. He said, this gentleman could not get a room. He paid somebody else $100,000 to get a suite. And so I'm listening. Well, William, if you look online, those suites are listed at $800, $1,100 a night. Where is this information coming from that he bought the room off the record? I mean, off the books for hundred grand. Where'd you just, just a rumor, correct? From a skeet. He couldn't afford a suite. And then I hear an interview with somebody talking to his brother, and his brother t tells me that this man, even though he's living in Mesquite, he's wealthy. So I don't know. I have no clue. Right. Mesquite is not an upscale community. It's kind of a middle-class retirement community, kind of on the low end. This is not a very expensive retirement community. Where did this cracker get this money from? Uh, this was carefully planned. This massacre was carefully planned. He did not do this alone. If I were an investigator, William... Would you follow the same logic as I am following, which is that this man did not pull this off on his own? Yes, I absolutely would think that way. All right, well, that's what America's thinking, on the savage nation at least. I can't speak for anyone else. KBET Las Vegas, Carl Line 6, fire away. Yeah, doctor, I've talked to you before. I'm the retired clinical psychologist. I, I want to agree with you on the, uh, uh, the, the automatic weapons. Uh, I have a 9 millimeter Glock handgun in my home, which is home protection, and that's it. But I'm going to ruffle the feathers of a lot of the Second Amendment people. They should be completely banned. Any automatic weapons are not needed. Military-type weapons, not good for hunting, not good for home well, protection. Well, first of all, they are banned. Automatic weapons are banned, uh, Carl. They're not, le they're not legal. They're so not legal. Th that's a, it's a moot point. They're, they're illegal. I mean, if you own an AR-15, and you can't own them in California to begin with because they have a pistol stock, let's say you own an AR-15, a very popular gun that a lot of people own. They're not automatic. They're not allowed to be automatic. I know there are conversion kits with one or two parts. I've got it. I've seen the parts and all of that stuff. Something is wrong. Paddock's brother doesn't make sense. He says he snapped. That's nonsense. No one books a room days in advance and methodically brings weapons and ammunition in and has a camera in the door to see when the police are coming if you snap. That's a carefully plotted, carefully planned assassination. This is a big story. It feels like 911. It feels like the shooting of JFK. Something is so bad with this picture, and I don't expect to get the answers today, but I guarantee you by the end of the week, I can almost guarantee it, and I almost bet it, that by the end of this week, things are going to come out about this guy in this event that will shock all of us down to our bone marrow. Unfortunately, I'm short of time. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Coming from up first, Eddie 
Mandalay Bay. Upstairs, Mandalay Bay, halfway up. I see the shots coming from Mandalay Bay. We have multiple casualties. GSW is the medical check. Multiple casualties. Repeat, just be advised, it is automatic fire. Fully automatic fire from an elevated position. Take cover. Multiple GSWs to the chest, legs, femoral arteries. They have a medical tent. They have the medical tent. 4A, off of Guile, south of Reno. We're now living in Syria. We are now living in Syria. A world that has gone mad, a nation that is totally insane. Everyone's blaming everyone else. Everyone has an answer that splits across the fault line of our times. But there are too many questions for me to have any answers. I have no answers for you. I have only questions. And I ask you again, what questions are bothering you most about the Vegas slaughter? I just received this from one of my, I don't know, my best producers who re prefers to remain anonymous, who writes this, it was not all good time for Paddock as he previously filed a lawsuit against Cosmopolitan Hotels and Resorts in 2012 following an incident that occurred at the Las Vegas Casino. They go on. Paddock spent two years in court fighting his case after submitting his initial complaint, citing negligence premises liability. It was ultimately dismissed with prejudice in late 2014, and exact details of the case were not available on the Clark County Court's website. What that means, I do not know in the big picture. We also know he was the son of a serial bank robber who ended up on the FBI Most Wanted list back in 1969 when he escaped from federal prison in Texas while serving a 20-year sentence. That unto itself does not have much bearing on this case. I mean, children come from mass murderers, and they wind up saints and vice versa. So the parent has nothing to do with it, but it's an interesting, it's an interesting factoid. But the question to me is, who is he really? He seems to have a very clean background. And he planned this very carefully. This was very carefully orchestrated. This was not a spontaneous event. This was not a guy who snapped. That's all garbage. Something is wrong with this picture. And then we're still talking about the issue of gun control. I know we're not allowed to talk about it. I know we're not supposed to talk about it. But listen, on Friday on this program, as the nation was going into the Jewish holiday of Yom Kippur, I asked a simple question. And I had a caller from New York who pulled his car over who was outraged with me. I said, is it real? Is the Bible, not the Bible, are the admonitions of the Bible about sin real? Or were they written by the Israelites in the desert to control wild Jews at the time? Well, he got so mad at me, saying, how dare you ask that question on a night like this, the holiest night of the year? I said, what do you mean, it's illegal to ask a question? Well, it turns out that the Jews were wild. They were worshiping the golden calf. That has nothing to do with this show particularly. But the issue is that callers don't want me to say certain things. They think that we're supposed to be in a box of understanding, that we don't ask certain questions. Well, I'm a free thinker. I'll ask any question that comes to my mind. And the biggest question is, who was he? And two, should we discuss gun control again? That's all. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. This is the new normal in America, unfortunately. The number of mass shootings, has, the pace of them has been increasing, and now we have the worst ever. In policing, we have talked about, and now in private security, uh, over the years, why we don't have more of these with the sheer availability of incredible weaponry in this country, the number of people who are either emotionally right, disturbed off. or... off the air. Bill Bratton, a, a real genius. A real genius. This is the new normal. You hear, that's the proper answer from a schmuck like this. The new normal. That's the best they could come up with, the new normal. Now go about your business, keep gambling, buy shoes, don't let anything stop you. Okay, something's wrong with the picture. Everything's wrong. KSFO, Ty, Line 8, go ahead, please. Okay, Michael, I think you're, I think you're possibly focusing on the wrong thing, uh, money-wise. First of all, uh, transferable machine guns have not been allowed to be made since 1986, so they are extremely expensive. We're talking 
ten to twenty five, thirty thousand dollars a piece. And if he had ten of these, he obviously had a lot of help getting them. Second, mm. it takes a tremendous background check by the U.S. government and months and months and months of waiting to even get one if you've got the scratch to buy one. And and it just doesn't seem realistic to me that a that an average Joe is going to have three hundred thousand dollars worth of, of guns in a room and didn't have help. Well, I'm not here to say I'm right and you're wrong, but the fact is I already said it doesn't look like a lone, a lone guy to me. That looks like it was a carefully planned, complicated event. I've said that over and over again. Well, of course. But, but I tell you, I, I live in Texas. It's legal to own a machine gun here. But being legal to own and being av- available to actually purchase are two different things. I used to work at a, a, a gun shop and was on a shooting team. We all entertained the thought of, of buying a Class three weapon. And I encourage your listeners to go out and look at what it takes to own a Class three weapon. It is mm. incredible the BS you have to go through, mm. and and I just I think this whole thing about gun control, gun control, gun controls is idiotic because there's something. Second of all, about the reason to own a machine gun, uh, we had a policeman on our team who was a class three dealer, and the reason to own a machine gun, there are blast to, blast to shoot. You go in and you can just roll bolts, uh, you know, into a, into a berm or shoot targets real fast. It is fun, but I tell you. It, this has nothing to do with with legal ownership of machine guns, but they are a blast of fire, no question about it. Well, okay, I, I hear you t- making it sound like it's just a fun, but when a, when a nut gets one, it's no longer fun, is it? Yeah, but when a nut gets one, he's not going to get one legally, and not, because it takes too much time and too much. Well, what about the fact that this guy, like uh, Lee Harvey Oswald, carefully planned the shooting position? He got a suite on the twenty second floor with a double exposure from two corners. He had a camera in his door to, to alert him to when police were there. Why did it take police 72 minutes to get there? Can anyone, can you answer that for me? And I'm not, I'm not blaming them. They're the, they're the winners, the heroes, the brave ones. Why 72 minutes to find out where he was shooting from and kill him? Well, I, pers- I personally think that they probably got rules of engagement because they could have sat, sat there and, and thrown hundreds of bullets into that window but they were probably worried about hitting their other uh, occupants in the hotel. No, I understand. They couldn't start firing at the window. Got it. But they could have been there sooner, couldn't they? Well, I I mean, I think they could have, but, you know, I don't know what their protocol is or anything like that. But I, but I, right. What's, I, so <clears throat> let me ask the other question. What slowed the police action down? That's a very good question. You know, This was not seven minutes of shooting, not 17 minutes of shooting. It was 72 minutes of machine gun fire coming from a suite in the hotel. Why did it take the police that long to get in there? Well, first of all, it's outrageous it should take that long. Second of all, I imagine the security in and the, and the security outside the hotel, i.e. the police, probably have a hard time crossing each other's barriers or something. Because, first of all, they don't want a SWAT team running through their hotel, so they're probably saying, that you are... Don't disturb something. I mean, I will bet you a million dollars you're right. And, you know, we're going to find out the hotel could have told them not to overreact. Absolutely. Look, as I said at the beginning, Ty, there are more questions than answers. And all I could do today is ask the questions. I don't have the answers. But I thank you for joining the Savage Nation, which has the most intelligent callers in the country. WAYB Radio, Paul, number three, line three. Go ahead. Uh, Michael. My question is, why choose a country music festival? That's the very demographic that resists gun control. And I'm thinking that this is a dream come true for those who wish to take away our weapons. or to dis- that's, a very good, that's a very good point. And this is so a- you, think, you think that this was planned and orchestrated? Not a lone wolf shooter. This is an individual or a group that planned this. They prepared for it. It was done with military precision, with military-grade weapons. Yes. Um, And then the media jumps in, along with the government officials, making a narrative. And the narrative is that it's a lone wolf, that he didn't have any support, he's an average person. I'm not buying it. I don't buy any of that at all. But, by the way, get a close-up view, if you can, of the windows from which this devil shot. 
all those innocent people. Do you see the windows are all shot out? Try this is not a hat. The, the, the police are lying when they say he broke the windows with a hammer. There's no way he could have broken a ten, an eight-foot window with a hammer. That window was either shot out or some other method was used like a, an explosive device. These windows were shot out from top to bottom. Try breaking a car window. It's very difficult to break to break those cars. Yeah, and and I, bra- I raised that issue at the beginning of the show. Glass in these hotels is of the highest level, highest quality, because the desert winds are very strong. There's also uh, earth rumblings out there. This is like bulletproof glass close to it. But you and I both know that a high-powered rifle would shoot those gla- those windows out, correct? I, I, I'm assuming so. I'm not an expert. Well, here's what I'm going to ask. If I'm an investigator with the LA, Las Vegas Police Department, the FBI, the first question I would ask is when the first shots were fired, were they of, sh- of, of, of uh, rounds coming out of the windows generally to break the window? Were they aimed shots or were they just shots to destroy the break the glass? That's to start with. How did he break the glass? Did he have help? Was there someone in there with a sledgehammer with him? How long did it take from the time the windows were broken until the shots started? Why did it take 72 minutes for the police to arrive and kill him, if they, in fact, killed him? My, my All right, so, again, there's more questions than answers. This is a new 9-11 in America, and the questions are going to grow all week. Very embarrassing, very difficult questions. We are now back to where we were years and years ago. This guy was well-trained. Something's wrong with the picture. Christian, KSFO, line one, make your point. Hey, Michael. I heard a your last caller mention military weapons and planning. I'm an expert marksman combat vet myself. Um, hmm. The media is saying we don't know much about the shooter, but reports are saying that he's unexperienced without training. But based on uh, the caliber and experience, he's either trained in smaller cal- caliber weapons like assault rifles or high-powered rifles mm-hmm. or less or had a large caliber heavy machine gun bought illegally, not an assault rifle. So it's it's almost certainly a belt-fed heavy machine gun uh, bought illegally or foreign. Well, wh- what does that sound like? The report that you hear, fi- the firing, when I say report, you know what I mean. The report of the gunfire. Does that sound like an AK to you? No, it sounded bigger than an AK. I've heard AKs and I've heard heavy machine guns, and that sounded like a heavy machine gun, a belt-fed machine gun. A belt-fed machine gun, what, like a fifty cal? Not a fifty cal, because you could not, you can set a, you can get a fifty cal into a casino. As far as I know, they're so big and heavy, and uh, I think it's more of a. a in the army would call it a two forty machine gun, uh, which is basically a, 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 a heavy suppressive machine gun meant for suppression. This was a military. This was a military operation, is what you're saying. What I'm saying is it's military-grade weapons. Yeah, but he also carried it out like a military, a guy trained by a military because how did he get away with firing for 78 straight minutes, Christian? He had it all planned out. Like you said earlier, it wasn't, he didn't snap. He, he had the room. He had the view. He knew the eagle. You know, I'm looking, I'm looking at a Daily Mail article, which I linked up on my website, view from the inside of a room like his, and it shows the... Angle of firing on the crowd below. This is so eerily reminiscent of the shooting of JFK where Lee Har- Harvey Oswald carefully picked the angle of firing from the book depository. This was carefully planned, Christian. You're right, and you're talking about the angle. And in order to just have an inexperienced guy point and shoot, you wouldn't hit anything. To, to just point and shoot from that angle at a crowd, you would need... Uh, a machine gun powerful enough to to not lose velocity or, or get affected by wind or different things going on in the atmosphere. So if, if it is assault weapons, if it's rifles, then he's really highly trained. If it's if not, I mean, it's still a, it looks it looks militaristic and, and the weapons are military grade. It's got to be. But, but Christian, the shots were fired from the 32nd floor at 10.08 p.m. It was dark. How did he, did, was he just shooting like fish in a barrel, randomly shooting or aiming at people? What do you think? If he, and I'm 99% sure it's a, a bell-fed machine gun, like I said. But what I think is that he, you would have to aim a little high anyway. To, to inflict this kind of damage, you have to, to be able to know what you're doing and, and know what the range and the velocity and, the, and the, being on the 32nd floor actually will do. So I think he knows all these things, and especially... 58 people are dead. 
515 are injured from last night's slaughter. This does not look like a random event to this talker on the Savage Nation. And I thank you for your expertise. More questions than answers. KBET, Las Vegas, Shannon has a very sad story to tell. Shannon, welcome to the program on this sad day. Hi, Dr. Savage. I listen to you all the time, 31 years old from Vegas, and I thought compelled to give you a call on this matter. My friend actually was at the concert and got shot um, in the shoulder. His name is Cody Coffer. Um, he's, you know, severely injured. He's in ICU. Um, what makes me believe and agree with you in the fact that this is not a lone wolf event um, was he was actually shot with a 22 uh, bullet. Um, what? Yes. I was going to ask you, what was the caliber of the wound? You're saying a 22, so that could be a 223 round. That could that could match the description of, of an AR-15. In other words, if it's a 223, it's an AR-15-style uh, weapon. But uh, you're saying 22 caliber. That means 22 caliber, but a 223 is a 22 caliber. Yes. Um, now, we all know, if you know anything, obviously, about weapons, like you said, the actual fire that you would heard from, you know, cell phone video, um, a twenty two wouldn't shoot that loud. Um, so, right. Like the last caller said, that sounded like a heavy machine gun. Yes, and it did. And so, it was, were, so were there multiple weapons being fired, Shannon? I do, believe, I do believe there were multiple weapons being fired. And to add a little spin to this entire endeavor, um, my my cousin was at the concert he got shot as well but it grazed his inner rib in between his arm and oh my god no actual bullet entry um so we don't know what he got shot with my brother who's ex-military was at the bellagio that night with friends um and there was gunshots in other locations now problem is media hasn't come out with that and that hasn't been confirmed through media outlets which we all know they don't always tell the truth and, and disclose Every You're alleging on this national show that there were multiple locations of shootings? Yes. And I well, we can't confirm it, but I don't know what to believe. It looks to me like a military operation here. And, Shannon, I do truly mean my heart goes out to you and your family on this horrible day in American history. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Protecting your family on a day like today is important. And if you have a home security system, I recommend you go to Simply Safe. It's a great way to use it to protect your family at home. I've met Simply Safe's founder. He's mechanically minded, a math kind of guy. Years back at Harvard and graduate school, when his friends started getting robbed in Boston, they came to him and said, We can't buy a security system. They have to be hardwired. We don't own our houses. There's a three year contract, it's extremely expensive. And he said, okay, there's got to be a better way. So he invented Simply Safe. Simply Safe is a totally wireless security system. It's top shelf, complete security with 24 7 alarm monitoring and police dispatch. And with Simply Safe, there are no contracts or hidden fees. You are never locked into this company. And when you move, you can take it with you. Okay, you don't have to drill to put it in. Simply Safe's popularity has soared since they began. They're protecting 2 million people right now. Get it. Check out Simply Safe. You'll get a 10% off. Purchase at simplysafesavage.com or if you want your home protected even sooner, like tonight, go to Best Buy. You can buy Simply Safe there. That's simplysafesavage.com. S I M P L I S A F E savage.com. In times such as these, I know we are searching for some kind of meaning in the chaos, some kind of light in the darkness. The answers do not come easy. But we can take solace knowing that even the darkest space can be brightened by a single light and even the most terrible despair can be illuminated by a single ray of hope. Unfortunately, there isn't even a single ray of hope here. The president is in a no-win position. What do you want him to say? What could he have said? Nothing. 
absolutely nothing more than he did say. What do you want him to say? It doesn't add up. Two windows, corner suite, cost a fortune. Where do you get the money? Expensive, high-powered rifles for an ordinary guy maybe saved up his money. This was carefully planned, carefully orchestrated. There are too many questions that remain unanswered tonight on the Savage Nation. I'm sure the answers will start appearing tonight and tomorrow, such as was there more than one shooter? Number one. Number two, what weapon did he use? We had a caller who said her boy, her a relative was shot in the shoulder, and it was a twenty-two caliber uh, exit wound or entry wound. Well, okay, that matches a two-two-three round. I know them very well. Everyone does who owns one of these kind of guns. A two-two-three would be would be twenty-two caliber. But when you listen to the report of the gunfire, that is not the sound of a twenty-two caliber weapon. Even an automatic, semi-automatic, doesn't sound like that. And the caller was 100% right to ask, was it a heavier caliber weapon? I think so. Something's wrong with the picture. How did he get all those weapons in? Were there inside people in the hotel who knew this was going to happen? The answers will come out this week, I can guarantee you. And no, Bill Bratton, this is not the new normal in America. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. All right, we're going back to the same story that is on everyone's mind. Who was this man? Did he act alone? It certainly was not a man who snapped. Everyone with a commonsensical attitude towards life knows this was carefully planned. How did he get that arsenal into the hotel room? Number one. Number two, why did it take 70-some-odd minutes for a SWAT team to go in there? Now, whether he shot himself or not, again, we don't know. The question is, with this deadliest, deadliest mass shooting in American history, and with two people running in the concert venue just before the attack saying, you're all going to die, there has to be more to the story. It is not a time for politics. It's a time for questions and possibly answers. He has no criminal record. He was a clean skin. Who is the psychopath? Let's dismiss the ISIS claim for the moment. Let's just dismiss that. There's something wrong with everything about this story. We had a caller in the last hour who told me news I hadn't read anywhere. Someone she was with was shot in the shoulder at the event, and she said it was a twenty-two caliber wound. That means it's a two-two-three, which would match an AK, uh, an AR-15. But if you listen to the sound of the gunfire, and there are many experts in my audience who are going to listen right now, and um, I want my call screener to pay attention. I want an expert to call who knows ballistics and knows acoustics to tell us what caliber that gun is. Let's listen again. Come on! 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 Come on!
Don't push. Don't push. How can you listen to that and not be moved by it? But moved where? Where do you go with it? Is there an expert in the audience who knows ballistics and acoustics who cares to chime in on the Savage Nation today and tell us what caliber that weapon was? Now, it's an important point. It's a very important point because I want to know what he was using. It didn't sound like a two two three to me personally. I'm not an expert. I've owned a Ruger Mini 14 for years. I used to shoot an AR-15 in a gun range for years. It doesn't make me an expert. I had to get rid of the AR-15 because I live in California, and I did. It never sounded like that. I don't know what he was shooting, but it doesn't sound like a two two three to me personally, and I'm no expert. It's that simple. Heavy gambler, retired accountant, no criminal record. He didn't snap. He's not just a psycho. There's something much more to this story. Who were the people running through the crowd before the attack? The two people who said, you're all, you're all going to die. Who? Mandalay Massacre, 58 dead. 515 injured. Machine gun terror overstripped 72-minute rampage, top of the Drudge Report. There are a hundred other stories I could be talking about, but this is all America's talking about for good reason. This is like 9-11 all over again. Not quite as dramatic. I'm aware of that. But it has all the earmarks of a 9-11 type attack, a tower high in the air, windows blown out of a, a high rise. I mean, the pictures are reminiscent of, of the Twin Towers. So I want to know answers for which there are none right now. I have the questions. I have no answers. And that's all I can say at this time. I have nothing else to offer to you. If there are any callers listening from Las Vegas, and I have a great affiliate in Las Vegas who were there, who was there, and has anything at all to add that is of any expert, any value, would you please call the show? Uh, please open one line. Leave one line open for a caller from Las Vegas. Jim, would you tell the call screen who can't hear me to open a line, clear out one line? WABC, Jerry, line one, make your point. Go ahead, please. Oh, Michael, uh, if there's, uh, that was clearly, to me, an AK-47 on Vietnam Combat Marine. Uh, that gun has a particular rattle to it. It's pretty distinctive, and that's exactly what that sounds like. A two two three is a supersonic round, and it's got a very distinctive crack when it's fired. That did not sound like a two two three. There's also a video out there that you can... Wait, wait, let's slow down. You're your ex-combat Marine from Vietnam, so you faced a North Vietnamese with two two three with uh wait with with ak-47 what's the round out of an ak-47 ak-47 is a uh 7.62 millimeter short round that uh like a 308 it's not the same as an m14 that's a 7.62 uh millimeter longer round 51 i believe the the other one's a little bit short the ak is shorter and it makes it well, Jerry, so jerry with with your trained ear what were you hearing you're hearing an ak being fired Yes, sir. Without a question, that was an AK. That was not a two two three. No way in God's world. No way. Well, then the caller in the last hour, whose friend was injured, shot in the shoulder, said it was a twenty two caliber round. Maybe the the nurse was mistaken. What do you think of that? A twenty two caliber round, if you're talking a room fire round, will not do that kind of damage. It's very uh, very much less powerful. If it's two two three, it will. A uh, seven point six two uh, short round. I think it's thirty nine millimeter. We'll definitely do that, and at that range, you don't have to aim. All you got to do is start pulling the trigger. But it's you know, Jerry, it's interesting that you, as a former combat marine in Vietnam, should call. I had planned a totally different show today. I was going to attack PBS for running this ten-part prop communist propaganda piece about the Vietnam War, one of the most despicable PBS shows in history, making American troops into Genghis Khan, and they quote John Kerry in it saying. American troops were like Genghis Khan. They killed everything in their sight. John Kerry is still up to his anti-American tricks. I was going to do that show today. I was going to have my friend um, Captain Phil Joya on, who was a Silver Star awardee, who was a, a combat veteran of Vietnam, a rifle company. It's unbelievable what they've just done on PBS, but we can't do that today. Now we're doing this. Can you imagine a, a battlefield has come to America, Jerry? Yes, sir. It's been gone away coming for a long time. And it's going to well, okay, as a former Marine, do you think this man acted alone? No, sir. No, sir. There's a video out there where you can hear two automatic weapons firing. It is clear you can listen to them. The rate of fire is different. The acoustic signature is different. I've uh, listened to myself. I've listened to it. And it's absolutely clear as a bell. 
there are two shooters at least. Well, why are they only reporting one? Uh, you know that as well as I do, Michael. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the an- yeah, of course, the question has the answer. When I say they, we're talking about those who cover up everything that occurs. The money, the media, the, the, the authorities, they have an agenda. What is the, well, so what is the agenda? To seize the guns? No, that's part of it. The other one is to make sure that nobody is offended here. We do not want to make it look like anything but a lone wolf, because that's going to start making people think conspiracy, Antifa, Muslim. It's going to ruin the PR for the hotels. They're going to lose money. So they have to be very nice about what they tell the public. Mm. There's two shooters at least. All right, well, thanks for the, look, this was an expert call just now. It's as good as you're going to get. I want to know who the two people were who ran through the crowd before the attack and said, you're all going to die, reported by numerous people in the crowd. I want to know, where are they? Uh, Maybe the FBI has found them. What about the girlfriend, the lady friend of this gunman? Where is she? Why has she not been interviewed or has she been interviewed? Well, they're not going to, you know, divulge that right now. The legacy of this attack has not yet been written. There is something wrong with the picture. Again, the phone number here is 855-407-282. We're leaving one open line for callers from Las Vegas on this very, very dark day in American history. Um, I want you to hear clip one again about the woman who was going through the crowd 45 minutes before the shooting saying you're all going to die. Listen to 01. So there was a lady who pushed her way forward into the concert venue into the first row, and she started messing with another lady and told us that we are all going to die tonight. It was about 45 minutes before the shots were actually fired, but then she was escorted out by security. Okay, next one. Obviously, she was telling us that in either to tell us to warn us or to tell us that we were all going to die, and she was part of it. So her and her boyfriend were both Hispanic. They were probably about shorter five footers, probably about five, 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 six. Um, They just look like everyday people. Okay, where are they? How did they know it was going to happen? It sounds like a small army was involved to me. And we will get the answers. I'm sure of it. This is going to start leaking tonight, tomorrow. Some of the conspiracy sites are already on to this with their theories, you know. Who is it, though? The Islamic connection to the Las Vegas massacre came and went. The ISIS group claimed responsibility, saying he was a Muslim convert. That was dismissed by the FBI, but... Again, does that really mean anything, that they dismiss something? The, uh, the the shooter's brother said he snapped or something. That's nonsense. Nonsense. You don't, you don't plan an event like this and snap. It's not snapping. Okay, so what is going on? Who is behind this? What is the purpose? KPRC, Daniel, line four. Go ahead, please. Real quick, God bless you, Dr. Savage. Also, I'll Dan. Want to, uh, relate to your last caller was correct. I believe it was 762, but also with the rate of fire, that was more than 30 splits. What I heard, pure audio, that's going to be a 762 belt fed. And that, to me, sounds like a 240 Bravo, which is what we use in the military. Seems very similar and close. Well, okay, so you would know just by the acoustics, uh, Dan? Just by the acoustics and the thud that it makes a swinging round. It tells 762 by heart. But the rate of fire was just belt fed, not magazine. Yeah, the, the rate of fire was what, 700 rounds per minute in your estimation? Exactly. That's going to be way faster than a clip. He took longer to reload than it would a clip. He was belt fed. Okay, so he was not firing 20, 20 round clips. I didn't hear that either. There were many more shots going out than 20 rounds or 30 rounds at a time. You're saying belt fed. Explain to the audience what that means. It's very important, Daniel. You're going to have 100 to 200 possibly even linked more ammunition together, you can get as much as 600 rounds linked together in a chain that's belt-fed through a uh, magazine well that's going to uh, chamber each round in succession. That rapid fire he had sounded belt-fed due to the rate of fire. That no, of, co- of course, th- th- these are illegal. That kind of uh, um, belt-feeding is illegal, I would assume? You have to have a uh, special permit and Class three license to even own that weapon. So the fact that he had this type of weapon, to me, acoustically, would suggest that that cost a lot of money, and it took a couple uh, back doors to get. Wow. I haven't read that anywhere, Daniel. Thanks for calling from KPRC Radio. we got to run along. I'll be right back. I'll be with you right until the top of the hour. 
And I will tell you right now that my callers, to me, are adding to our knowledge of this terrible, terribly, this terrible tragedy in Las Vegas. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Just be advised, it is automatic fire, fully automatic fire from an elevated position. Take cover. Multiple GSWs to the chest, legs, femoral arteries, and a medical tent. At the medical tent, 4A, off of Guile, south of Reno. Yes, that's the sound of the brave men who breached the door and killed him. They were not members of the ACLU you were listening to. They, know, they were not lawyers from Bolt Law School, NYU Law School, Columbia Law School. None of them were members of the ACLU. They were the police. In other words, those men and women hated by Black Lives Matter and the vermin in the media. But the question still remains, why did it take 78 minutes for this incredible team to get in there? I still don't understand it. You got automatic fire coming from the, a high rise. All right, so calls start going out. 9-11 calls go out. Everyone in that audience had a cell phone. Calls go out. That goes into the uh, Las Vegas Police Department. All right, how long should it have taken for them to figure out where the guns were? Were they in the building within 10 minutes and they were up there after 78? How long did it take them to go into the Mandalay? We're going to find out some things that may be very uncomfortable after this. It's owned, what, by MGM? And we're not accusing them of anything, but I suspect that there was a, gl a go-slow order that came out of the hotel. Something does not make sense. Now, we're getting reports from other callers in Las Vegas that are a little disturbing, and I don't know whether they're valid or not. John on KBET Radio. John, what are you alleging? Uh, yeah, that the police scanners uh, were on live last night and uh, they were reporting multiple gunshots. So what had occurred right before the main shooting took place, there was a shot, some woman supposedly got shot in the head um, by it at the Tropicana Casino. And then there was another gunshot that took place at other local casinos. And then, so that's basically to deter Metro and get them to go north away from the country. Oh my God, there was a setup shooting elsewhere? Yes, and then that's not being reported. And then boom, the main firing takes place. But then the feed's still coming in on the scanners that there's more than one shooter. So this is quite. Well, if what you if you are if you what you are reporting now is is true, then this was conducted by ISIS. This would be a classic military operation from an enemy of this nation. Yep, I agree. And then uh, what's not being reported is that Metro SWAT went into Luxor um, inside the casino. I don't know if it was right inside. Uh, I mean, lobby area. They took a guy out there, and then there's now there's some kind of so-called report of a of a vehicle or Audi with um, the bomb material. Now that's just hearsay. We don't know. Um, no, but what you just reported is extremely al alarming. If it is true that a woman was shot in another hotel, another side of town, and SWAT went there first, and then they were diverted, and then this this devil started shooting from this hotel. And they weren't available. Is that does that explain the seventy-eight minute delay? Join the Savage Nation. Call now eight five five four hundred Savage eight five five four hundred seven two eight two Savage. We all know this was an act of terror. Whether he worked alone or with others doesn't really matter. We don't know his political orientation, but it was an act of terror because it terrorized the nation. 
Yes, there were people killed in that crowd, but it's terrorized the nation. And we need to know more about him. We need to know his background. We need to know his affiliations. You can say anything you want about it, but it's not helping us figure this out. He's what's known in the intelligence community as clean skin. I think that's the name for it. So the conspiracy theories are already raging across uh, the blogosphere. And uh, as a gun owner myself, and I have been a gun owner, I was, I was on the rifle team in high school, which doesn't make me a, 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 you know, George Washington here. I'm not new to this discussion. But do you think every psycho in this country should own a machine gun? I mean, I mean, I'm asking a simple question. First of all, it's illegal for a psycho to own a machine gun. Secondly, it is legal to own a machine gun in, in, in Nevada. I don't know if you know that. And he was a Nevada resident. Did you know it's legal to own a machine gun with a license. I don't know if you know that. This was a military-grade weapon. Where he got them, we'll soon find out. Automatic rifles are illegal for anyone to own. But a machine gun is legal to own in Nevada. Did you know that with a license? Was he licensed? Was he alone? Were there two shooters? Were there shootings prior to this in another part of town to divert the SWAT team? We don't know yet. But I can guarantee you within 24 hours we'll know a lot more than we know now. WMAC Radio, Jeremy, line one, go ahead, please. Yes, I'd like to share some simple savage that um, basically goes against what the previous caller was saying about there being two shooters. Um, having been uh, shot at by an AK-47 in Iraq in an urban environment, the first thing I learned is that there are three sounds that all come in different cadences. The first sound is the sound of the bullet passing through the air, which sounds like a loud zip or a drill. It's the only way I can express it. The second mm. sound is the sound of the bullet impacting concrete, asphalt, or, for example, the wall that was above my head. Mm. The third sound that you will hear is the actual sound of the gunfire because it takes time for that sound to travel to your ear. Mm. The cadence of the impact will be different because the bullet has slowed down significantly over, I believe it was about 400 yards the shooter in Vegas was shooting from. Yes. So that cadence will sound different. What we're hearing in the video is the impact of the bullet followed by the actual sound of the gunfire, which scientifically... Jeremy, I want to ask a personal question, and you don't have to answer it. A lot of veterans are hanging on the edge of their seat today, not only for this show, but everywhere they can turn for information. Men like you who were in combat who were shot at, is this causing any kind of reaction in you that you're not too happy with? Um, I guess my initial reaction when I woke up this morning and heard about it was hopelessness that we could, our fellow man could do this to a fellow man. It mm. was time where we, we have so many other things to worry about as a people. Right. That's what struck me. How could a human being do this to Men, women, children at a country concert. What in the hell is going on in my country? There seems to be a mass psychosis. But does this sound like an ordinary guy to you, Jeremy? No, it, it doesn't. It's more to it than than just an ordinary person. I mean, yes, someone in Nevada can own a machine gun legally, but after President signed the, uh, Reagan signed the law in '86. They can only ma own one that was made before 1986, and right now the market for that starts at about twenty-five thousand so, dollars. No, he had twenty. He had twenty rifles in his in his room. How did he? Get, were they all machine guns? What is this guy? An army of one? Well, if they were all machine guns, then at a minimum he would be spending five hundred thousand dollars plus two hundred dollars a piece for the tax stamp, plus a nine to twelve month wait for an approved ATF form four. So, there's no this. This idea that it was the likelihood of it being a legally owned machine gun is is, is slim to none. Unless I hear you. Well, Jeremy, I have no advice to a man who's faced bullets flying at him. I never have, and I hope I never will. And all I can say is I hope that it doesn't freak too many people out because, yes, it's heartbreaking to think that an American would shoot other Americans for no reason like this. This is crazy. But as far as gun control goes, Chicago has some of the toughest gun control laws in the country. It seems to have not stopped the gangs from killing each other. Not that that ends the discussion, but it's certainly something to think about on the other side of that one. 
Oh, my God. We have a caller on KBET Radio in Las Vegas who says he is a neighbor of the shooter. This man has not appeared on any other show in America. Is this true? Before I take him, call screener. We have a caller on the line from KBET Radio in Las Vegas who says he is a neighbor of the maniac who did the shooting. Rick on line nine, please go ahead. Yeah, Mr. Savage, how are you today? Are you really a neighbor of this maniac? I, w- I was, yes, sir. And I, I'm, I'm no longer in, in Mesquite anymore. I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. But I was his neighbor for about seven, eight months in Mesquite. And uh, I, I can tell you 100% that they, they, this is not that kind of guy. Um, hmm. I, I was there working and seen him probably every other day on my way home. He used to sit with his garage open and sit out there in his driveway with his lawn chair right at the edge of the garage and, and, the, and the driveway. And he would wave all the time when I was going by. Really nice guy. There's a little uh, bar around the corner where they have uh, poker vending machines where you sit at the bar, you know. Mm-hmm. He used to go down there all the time and sit there and drink drink a few beers and a couple, have a few drinks and play that little vending that little vending slot machine uh, with the uh, video. Well, Rick, you're, ta- you're talking about a man who has just committed the greatest mass murder in American history, and you're making him sound like an ordinary guy who wasn't violent, didn't have any Nazi flags in the garage, uh, didn't seem crazy to you. Are you sure it was him? Uh, I'm 100% positive. I'm 100% positive. I know exactly who the guy is. I was in the Marine Corps, and I, I've, I've talked to this guy. Person, we drank beer together, not just in passing, kind of sitting there playing games together. I had another guy work for me. His name was Steve, and we used to go to that same bar after work and 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 have a few drinks and play video poker as well. And he would sit there too, and we we would just talk about nonsense stuff. And I told him that I was in the Marine Corps, that talked about guns and all kinds of stuff. He he never even told me that he owned a gun. He, did he ex- did he express any political opinions to you in those discussions? No, sir. No, sir. Not a thing. I, I, I mean, other than I told him because I was wearing a Trump team shirt that said Trump team on it, and he was a Trump fan. But other than that, <laughs> we didn't talk about it. Oh, don't let that get out. I know. <laughs> But and then the the uh, the acoustics. When you started talking about that, I was when I decided to call because I, I know I've been fired at with a 7.62 AK-47 thousands of times, and I can tell you with beyond a shadow of a doubt that that is a 7.62 round. There's no doubt in my mind. You can you can tell like your previous caller said by the thud of it at the end of it and the discharge rate. Uh, 22 fires at a lot faster velocity and a, and, and a r- more rapid recession than the seven. But but do you confirm that this was a belt a belt firing weapon? If not a belt, now no, you have to be careful when you define belt fed weapon because that could be a drum mag, it could be a, a belt fed from the side. I would say it was probably a 50 round drum magazine. Not an extended uh, mag. Not now are are are, are 50 round drum magazines legal? Yes, they are. In some states, they are. And I frankly argued against private ownership of these before, and I was roundly attacked by individuals who called this program. I said, what the hell do you need a thing like that for? I'm and, of course, the, st- the standard answer is we're going to hold off the U.S. government when it comes for us. But going back to your main point, Rick, and I need to confirm this. I'm just going to take you on your word because what you just said has not been heard on any network. It's going to be picked up and played elsewhere. I know that. And, you know, thanks to the Savage Nation, you are a man who was a former neighbor of this shooter, and you say he was an average Joe, never expressed any political opinions, um, no religious affiliation. Is that true? That's 100% true, yes, sir. And, I, and I, wow. I've already I've already talked to the Clark County Sheriff's Department this morning, called them and told them everything I know and, and everything that has, was said between me and the guy. Now, this was, this was spring. I was there in December of 2015 all the way until June of, of 2016. I was his neighbor for that entire time. And in, in Mesquite? In Mesquite, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Unbelievable. I, I, I multiple, 
times. I've spoke with him multiple times. I have a, and I'm not a big conspiracy theory guy, but it, it don't sit right. I know this guy. I've, I've drank beer with this guy. It, it, All right, so, okay, you're not a conspiracy theorist. Ordinary guy, doesn't snap. Something's wrong with the picture. Clean skin. Was he brainwashed? I don't I, I don't think so. He was too smart of a guy, too smart of a guy to be to be brainwashed, I think. You know, that's All right. So wait, you don't go for conspiracy. He wasn't brainwashed. So what is your instinct telling you as a man who's been in combat? Obviously, you have very a very, very heightened sense of reality. What is your instinct telling you? It's a setup. I know and I know that sounds weird, but it's got to be a setup. What what more Wow, wait a minute, hold on. I, I understand what you're saying. That's the body they found in the room, but he may not have been the shooter. Exactly, exactly. I mean, how many movies have you seen with that exact same plot? I mean, oh my God. how does it describe multiple people running through the crowd? What, two people running through the crowd saying you're all going to die? Yes. And then all of a sudden, it's some average Joe guy who was an accountant who spent his days gambling at the video poker machine around the corner from his house drinking beer who for all, all right so by if you were right if you were writing the mystery novel there are far more nefarious players involved they did the shooting they broke into his room and killed him and made him look like the shooter by laying guns in the room absolutely and he he had been there since the 28th of september yeah and then, and then finally on the last day of the last show of the concert he, he starts shooting people I mean, it, it, you know, it doesn't add up. Why didn't he shoot people a long time ago? What did he do? Go out and enjoy his weekend and then decide he was going to kill people? Like, it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up to me, especially not this guy. You know, this not this guy. <laughs> so you're, you're confirming in your mind a conspiracy theory in your mind. We call it that. Call it what you want. That's the person they found in the room, but we don't know if he was the shooter is what you're saying. That's, that's what I'm taking it as. I mean, prove to me he was the shooter. Show me the ballistics on his hands from him shooting and on his clothes, from him him shooting all these shots. On top of that, watch the videos. AK-47, watch any video from when we were in Afghanistan, and an AK, the end of an AK-47 in the middle of the night lights up like a Christmas light with a flash. There's nothing the, coming out of that room. The, wait, there were no flashes coming out of the windows of the Mandalay? Watch the videos. I've, I've, watched, I've watched them on Twitter and on YouTube a hundred times, and they're looking at the Mandalay Bay and, all of, and a lot of these... Uh, cell phones that people are holding, and you don't see a flash one coming out of that room. Well, did he have a flash suppressor on the end of his weapon? You wouldn't have, I mean, there's still, I mean, you're 30 stories up in the middle of the night, you're going to see something. I mean. But why would he, and anyway, why would he need a flash suppressor if he was just randomly shooting into a crowd? He was gonna what, what's that for? Whoever was doing it knew that they would be caught eventually, but you're saying he didn't even do it. I, I mean. I'm not going to say he didn't do it, but it's just hard to believe. It's really hard to believe knowing the guy. That this All right, you, I want to repeat what, we're, what we've been talking about because I'm going to play this sound again tomorrow. Jim, we got to grab this. This caller, Rick, from KBET in Las Vegas, says he used to live next to the alleged shooter. He doesn't believe this alleged shooter did it for the reasons he described. And he's not given to conspiracy theories, but he thinks the whole thing was a setup and there are other individuals involved. Does that, does that accurately depict what you are saying, Rick? Yes, for the most part. I, I mean, it, it sounds harsh coming off like that because it makes me sound like a, <laughs> like a weirdo, you know, but there's too <laughs> much involved knowing the guy personally. So, All right. All right, weirdo. Don't worry about it, weirdo. This country takes weirdos to figure things out, but you're not a weirdo. You're an American patriot who's actually faced bullets flying at him from an AK-47. Rick, thanks for calling from Las Vegas. Well, we'll have to see where this all plays out. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Bye. I 
I need everybody in that hallway to be aware of it and get back. We need to pop this and see if we get any type of response from this guy to see if he's in here or if he's actually moved out somewhere else. Got me. All units on the 32nd floor. SWAT has explosive breach. Everyone in the hallway needs to move back. All units move back. Breach, breach, breach. An Army veteran is saying that the Las Vegas shooting is worse than skirmishes he has been in in Iraq. Did you hear that one? 50 dead, 400 transported to hospitals. It's getting worse by the minute. When you hear injured, you know, injured from a gunshot like this is not the same as breaking a hangnail at, a, at an Antifa meeting. I have someone who says he's a state-certified ballistics expert in very, and I have very little time. George on KSFO, what is it that you hear with your trained ear? Okay, first of all, it is an AK or a similar type weapon. And that's because of its cyclic rate of fire. And the thing that people have to remember is that as the elevation increases, when you're shooting from an elevated position, the drop of the bullet from the line of sight decreases the higher you go. So it's not like he has to adjust for trajectory or anything else like that. The second thing is, to avoid muzzle flash, what happens is the shooter sits inside or stands inside the window as long as the muzzle is inside the room, you'll still hear the report. But what you won't hear, what you won't see, is muzzle flash. All right, so that explains why the windows were shot out virtually for their entire height. He didn't just break. It looks like he just shot the windows out to me. George was so out of time. There'll be more and more and more. A lot of this does not add up. Most particularly the caller before who said he was he doesn't believe this man did it. That he was just shot in the room. Savage.